good evening all to the 118th session of the weekly huddle. I'm Anup and joining me today is my friend and co-host Praneet. We both are cardiologists working at Kim's Hospital. All of you, this has been quite repetitive. So I'm directly gonna go to the case for today. This is a 56 year old male who has a history of diabetes and hypertension for about seven, eight years now. They were all reasonably controlled. He was recently admitted when he complained of angina, which led to a stress test, which was found abnormal. An angiogram was done, which showed proximal LED tight stenosis, uh, for which he underwent uh, a single stent angioplasty. <clears throat> uh, his uh, LV function is good, and uh, his basic uh, workup was were more or less normal. So this is his first follow-up. Two weeks after discharge, he's doing okay. Otherwise, he's taking his routine medications. He doesn't have any active cardiac symptoms. I'm not listing the medications uh, just to save the confusion. Although if uh, we are interested, we can discuss what all medications he's taking. So as I talk to him, uh, he says he's walking around at home, but he's not going out and walking because uh, whenever he tries to exert, he gets uh, knee pain. It's there on both the sides, more on the right side, less on the left side. This knee pain is not new for him. He had been having this for at least two, three years now. Uh, it is a gradual onset. And the two years back, he saw an orthopedic for it, where he was uh, diagnosed as of osteoarthritis. And he was told that uh, you continue till the time you can. And at, when you reach a point where it starts interfering with your lifestyle, that is when we need to consider about uh, knee replacement. And uh, at that time, he was given a one month course of vitamin D and calcium, which he uh, duly took. So <clears throat> right now he's able to just walk within the house, but not able to do 20, 30 minutes of uh, walking or any formal cardiac rehab because of that. And while he doesn't have any other active cardiac symptoms, I do insist upon him um, doing uh, or engaging in physical activity. The only problem is that uh, knee is limiting factor for anything more than what his uh, activities of daily living are. And this is what I want to discuss today because in this kind of patient subset, which are quite common, the question that always comes is, should we refer this patient to orthopedic for a knee replacement versus uh, we try a non-surgical treatment and uh, to understand or to weigh how much of those non-surgical treatment actually work, how much of them have placebo effect, and even if they have placebo effect, how can we make the best out of it? Because at the end of the day, it's about pain control. And even if you have a placebo control pain control, that is placebo pain control, that is that is okay. I, I, I'll take that. So uh, we are going to discuss non-surgical approach towards managing osteoarthritis of the knee. And uh, the subtopics that I have divided here are what are the role of calcium, vitamin D, or other vitamin supplementation in these kind of patient subset? What are the role of prosthetics or orthotics, uh, these knee braces and all these that we get? How much do they help? Are there any particular kind that we should be prescribing? Are there any particular patient subset where it helps? Is there any role of offloading these patients? Uh, can we provide them with some sort of support device uh, which uh, will offload the knee, hence reducing the pain? Intraarticular injection have been uh, quite in fancy, uh, be it steroids, be it hyaluronic acid. And recently we are talking about uh, new anti-inflammatory drugs uh, all of which have been discussed. So what are the role of those intraarticular injections? Uh, which patient we should refer for those? And what should we expect if patients get intraarticular injection? When to refer these patients for physiotherapy, understanding that a lot of these diseases, they, are, uh, they, are, they have very limited response to uh, physiotherapy. But is there something that we can do in the realm of physiotherapy where, uh, where we can reduce uh, the, the pain or where we can improve the mobility of these patients. And then last thing, which is more for cardiologists, what are the strategies that we can use to engage cardiac rehab in such situations? Mostly I'm talking about uh, uh, doing uh, 
upper body exercises or uh, doing uh, those kind of exercises where uh, knee is a little bit offloaded. So what are the tips and tricks that a cardiologist would uh, tell to their patients so that they can engage in better physical activity? So these are some of the topics that I have thought we can discuss about so that next time when we get a patient like these, we should be able to at least guide them better and uh, trigger appropriate referral as and when needed. So Praneet, I'll start with you. If, if you could... Um, uh, give your suggestions, and then we'll ask others for their thoughts as well. Yeah, good evening, everyone. So uh, I will share my thought process on uh, this uh, orthopedic uh, problem. Uh, though I may be wrong, I'm more to learn, uh, but I will uh, share my thoughts on it. So firstly, for a 56-year-old uh, person, I would... Uh, be a bit uh, uh, unhappy that he had osteoarthritis at this early age group. Uh, so I would try to see whether he really has a degenerative osteoarthritis or uh, is there any other thing uh, which is contributing to his arthritis. So maybe I will uh, try to look into any other inflammatory um, arthritis which is contributing to his early onset. I would uh, doubt that he was having a degenerative osteoarthritis at this point of time. Uh, there may be one uh, rheumatologist opinion just to uh, rule out whether there is any other uh, possible etiology whereby we can help him out. Second, if uh, we presume it to be a degenerative uh, osteoarthritis, which is limiting his uh, physical activity, the most important thing will be the pain and uh, not able to walk and uh, do his daily activities. So for pain management, the most important thing is to uh, give him some pain relief. Uh, so, so I would suggest him to take paracetamol or uh, the combination of tramadol and paracetamol. Uh, ask him to avoid NSAIDs at any cost, so, uh, which people do take in, both in the form of topical and at equally systematic. So this both of uh, NSAIDs should be avoided and maybe use some uh, hot fermentation or other non-pharmacological measures for relief of pain uh, will be anchored. Uh, regarding role of exercise, most of the time it is because of the uh, weight which has been um, transmitted to the degenerated joint that uh, contributes to his pain. So I would suggest him to try to change his uh, footwear because even if the joint alignment is not adequate, that can put an undue strain. And equally can lead to maybe uh, bowing of the knees or a change of angulation. So I would uh, suggest him to try to uh, pay attention to footwear where his joint alignment is adequate. Uh, that itself might to a certain extent help uh, relieve uh, pain. Second thing uh, to uh, to reduce the amount of effort, uh, amount of uh, pressure put on to the joint. I would suggest him to do some exercises which are non-weight bearing. So instead of standing, walking and doing some exercises, he can do those exercises whereby he is either sitting or probably lying down and trying to strengthen the uh, quadriceps and the hamstrings whereby these muscles can get strengthened and the amount of weight or the amount of pressure that goes on to these degenerated joints can be reduced. Uh, the role of uh, calcium and vitamin D is the patient has any deficiency of these uh, things, then probably uh, it helps them uh, regain the strength of the bones. Uh, most important stimulus for bone strength will be again the uh, weight training in any form. So if the patient uh, gives a stimulus of weight, then that increases the uh, release of those factors whereby these vitamin D absorption or the calcium absorption can be enhanced and the uh, bone strength can be enhanced. Uh, that is uh, the take on uh, vitamin D. Uh, role of uh, intra-articular injections, steroids and hyaluronic acid, they help in uh, relieving the pain in a short-term phase, phase where if the pain is uh, unbearable and if it is very much uh, significant, then probably injection of steroids helps reduce inflammation locally and helps in uh, relieving the pain. I believe the injection of hyaluronic acid helps improve the health of these cartilages or the meniscus. Um, though my knowledge is limited in this regard, but they are used 
essentially to help uh, in improving again the health of the cartilages where they help in growth of uh, cartilages but my role or my knowledge is limited a uh, role of uh, physiotherapist is definitely there a uh, physiotherapist will help in improving the strength of these uh, quadriceps and hamstrings and thereby help uh, relieve pain also he will uh, suggest some postures to be avoided and uh, things to do so i believe uh, before uh, the decision of knee replacement or uh, is done uh, a good session or uh, with the physiotherapist is must a uh, person should work with a physiotherapist and do all the exercises whereby his uh, uh, osteoarthritis can be managed if uh, ultimately everything fails then probably he should go to uh, orthopedician and take his opinion in relation to uh, what is the status of his arthritis uh, do some investigations maybe x rays or sometimes other uh, advanced imaging to know the status of degeneration and then take a call whether a replacement uh, should be done or not uh, and regarding support uh, devices probably if the pain is bearable using some walking sticks or the supports probably by which the weight can be transmitted or weight can be equally distributed to the other uh, walking stick which may help reduce the amount of weight that is being transmitted to the affected joint so i believe it will help uh, but most of it <laughs> most of the patients they are shy in taking uh, these supports because it makes them feel uh, old and equally it is a bit of a social stigma so hence i think they are not quite popular in the patient population so this is uh, my take on uh, this patient and uh, regarding uh, the last question about the cardiac rehabilitation in this patient because he is not able to walk around uh, yes patients can uh, still do exercises in the form of using resistance bands or maybe uh, doing some uh, form of uh, yoga if people can are uh, comfortable use doing swimming then probably swimming can be done whereby uh, the weight on the joints is not much it probably also helps in improving the mobility uh, and uh, other forms of exercise are there so just because osteoarthritis is there it uh, should not stop them from doing the rehabilitation Uh, a bit of cooperation and bit of uh, encouragement to the patient we can still do some uh, cardiac rehabilitation to this patient i i believe i answered all the questions and if there is anything i would be answering them thank you pranit you mentioned few things i have been making notes of that so i'm going to start with you first uh you can answer it as briefly as possible you said early onset osteoarthritis what is your age cut off non scientific that you would consider early onset uh, 65 or above uh hot fermentation you mentioned i personally have never prescribed hot fermentation for osteoarthritis what is your intention how do you prescribe them or how to do it uh these gel packs are available which are both cold and uh, hot which can be used they app you apply it on to the uh, surface of the knee joint uh, whereby it kind of helps uh, reduce the or kind of warm up the joints and they help you mobilize move around and uh, can help relieve the pain that is uh, that is what i think will help uh, these patients uh, relieve from pain you mentioned vitamin d deficiency and replacing uh, what is your vitamin d goal in these patients subset the ideal recommendation should be less than 30 but i would accept anything about 15 should be fine uh, it should not be less than 15 but is there an upper is there an upper number that you are aiming for no anything above 15 should be okay uh, anything more than 100 or uh, 70 toxicity i don't want them to go into toxicity uh, but at least if they are maintaining between 15 to uh, 50 i i will uh, be happy and accepting that number okay that is all that i had for you pranit thank you so much uh, we were supposed to be joined by an orthopedic surgeon from kims uh, he probably stuck in some case or something so once he joins we will take his opinion as well and uh, in the meantime i'll continue my discussion with rest of the attendees 
uh, may I invite Shankar sir for his opinion because I'm pretty sure that Shankar sir, you are seeing far more osteoarthritis than what uh, than what we are, and I'm sure you are not sending all of those patients for surgery. So, how are you managing those uh, those patients in your clinic? Well, good evening to all. Uh, this is a, a quite a common uh, problem we encounter in our clinical practice. Uh, so before they go to orthopedic surgeons, uh, they come to family physicians. So osteoarthritis, uh, uh, when they come to us, we categorize them, whether it is mild or moderate to severe or advanced. Suppose uh, the patient has got uh, uh, very low levels of uh, uh, knee pain or intermittent uh, with a relatively well-preserved joint function and quality of life. Then we say it is only a mild variety. So only low levels of uh, or intermittent uh, knee pain. Uh, but uh, moderate to severe knee pain, knee arthritis, uh, there will be persistent pain and with the significantly impairment of uh, functionality, activity, participation, and uh, quality of life. So, so this is uh, moderate to, here this is a case of a moderate to severe osteoarthritis uh, in this index case. For example, uh, in the same persistent pain, even in the night, uh, interrupting the sleep, uh, even at rest also, if he has got a persistent pain, then it is a case of advanced uh, osteoarthritis. Uh, most of the times, uh, the pain will be on the medial side or uh, diffuse on the medial side or on the anterior aspect in case of uh, uh, this osteoarthritis. But the posterior pain is uh, very less. But if it is posterior pain is there, we should suspect uh, uh, the popliteal cyst that is a Baker cyst. Uh, so then uh, coming to this mild, moderate and severe and advanced, uh, there are two varieties of osteoarthritis. Uh, we come across, so that is a, one is a tibio femoral. So another is a, a patello femoral. The, in the tibio femoral, most of the times it's the medial and the lateral. Uh, there will be narrowing of the, uh, the joint space at the condyles. Uh, the osteophytes are there. The sclerosis will be there. And sometimes uh, it may be associated with uh, uh, effusion, uh, the synovitis and with effusion. And sometimes the CPPD, the crystals will be seen. So these are all uh, uh, regarding. So why I talked about the tibio femoral and the patello femoral? Uh, there are some devices will be there. Uh, adjunctive devices will be there to reduce the uh, uh, degenerative process. Uh, so depending on the radiography uh, in the clinical practice, we grade it. Uh, depending on the osteophytes, joint space, uh, narrowing, and the sclerosis, and the bone deformity, we grade it uh, from uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the grade 4 is a severe uh, variety where there will be osteophytes, large osteophytes, and uh, marked uh, joint space narrowing, and severe sclerosis, and uh, the definite bone end deformity will be there. So coming to categorizing whether it is mild, moderate to severe, advanced, whether it is the tibia femoral, mostly because where the tibia and femoral ends are involved, whether it is a patella femoral, whether it is the patella and the femoral, femur joint, femur uh, bone, so femoral end. Then uh, we, most of the times, here, this is a case of a moderate to severe osteoarthritis index case. We uh, advise them uh, quadriceps exercises most of the times. 
so quadriceps exercise they increase the muscle uh, the quadriceps muscle strengthening and uh, if the patient is obese then uh, this is a non pharmacological management i am telling this is a exercise the weight management he has to reduce his weight to 5 to 10% of uh, uh, body weight if he is obese then uh, knee braces are uh, available in the market so he can uh, go for the unloaders as uh, dr pranith has alluded to so the valgus uh, knee bracing the unloaders are available in the market it shifts the load uh, from the medial compartment uh, with intent to relieve uh, pain and improve function in in patients with the medial uh, especially tibio femoral joint osteoarthritis so these uh, knee braces we advise in a tibio femoral joint osteoarthritis if the patient has got a patello femoral mostly patella and femoral end then uh, uh, we advise taping and also bracing uh, it, it will reduce the joint stress uh, and the second third after the knee braces only they are meant for unloading uh, offloading uh, then uh, uh, assistive uh, walking devices just many uh, things are there in the market uh, surgical shops we can go for any the walking sticks or cane we can use uh, so they have to use in the mostly osteoarthritis may not be same in the both the joints uh, both the sides uh, right and knee left but uh, sometimes more on the one side in that case so walking stick should be in the contralateral unaffected side uh, he should use uh, this is uh, regarding the non pharmacological uh, management uh, then he, if he doesn't get relief then we ask him to apply uh, topical uh, uh, nsaids topical diclofenac gel and uh, sometimes capsaicin also though it causes some little burning initially but uh, on constant use uh, there won't be that much then uh, patient can have uh, suppose a patient has, uh, here the persistent pain is there the so patient can uh, simple analgesic uh, like the paracetamol acetaminophen he can consume uh here i am little then if he doesn't get relief with the acetaminophen uh, maximum we give 300 3000 but uh, 1500 mg i limit most of the times uh if he doesn't get relief then uh, one has to go for uh, oral non steroidal anti inflammatory drug drugs uh, oral nsaids uh but uh, they should be used if at all uh, if they are mandatory in this case if the he is compelled to use because of the pain relief then uh, he has to use in a minimal dose and for the shorter uh, duration and intermittently he has to use but here he, in this case since he is hypertensive diabetic and uh, underwent uh, angioplasty so definitely he will be on uh, uh the dual antiplatelets so low dose aspirin will be there the p2 y12 uh, inhibitors will be there so here we should be very much cautious uh when we use uh the nsaids uh e, they there will be increase because both will uh, block the cox1 pathway uh so there will be chances of uh, bleeding uh see the beneficial effect of the aspirin also will be attenuated by the non selective nsaids there are selective nsaids are there they are cox2 inhibitors like celecoxib or etoricoxib 60 mg or celecoxib 200 mg the non selective nsaids we have got uh, the less uh, 
toxic gastrointestinal toxic is ibuprofen then comes the etadolac uh, then naproxen then diclofenac then pyroxicam then uh, so highest will be the indomethacin the lowest will be the ibuprofen so ibuprofen uh, if at all uh, if it is necessary uh, we can give with a little caution when the patient is on dual antiplatelets we can give a short term minimal dose uh, intermittently ibuprofen can be given if it doesn't get relief or if nsaids are contraindicated or uh, there is no relief with the nsaids then we'll go for duloxetin snri this is a serotonin norepinephrine uh, reuptake inhibitors duloxetin uh, these can be combined with the nsaids or uh, in patients where the uh, nsaids are contraindicated like gastrointestinal toxicity cardiovascular disease or uh, chronic kidney disease then uh, we can give straight away we can go for duloxetin and duloxetin is uh, we start with the 30 mg gradually we increase we can go up to uh, 120 mg also if it doesn't get relief with the uh, non pharmacological with the topical nsaids oral nsaids or uh, either addition of uh, duloxetin then uh, we can try uh, this intraarticular glucocorticoid injection but uh, uh, this is uh, useful in only in the selected uh, patients only where there is a greater pain and then the presence of effusion is there we can uh, withdraw the flu fluid and uh, at the same time we can inject uh, this uh, uh, intra Articular glucocorticoid, especially triamcinolone phenacard, forty milligrams uh, uh, is advisable. And where there is a less structural severity, there is a structural severity is more. Uh, this may not help. Uh, that's why the intracortical articular corticosteroids are sele in in selected patients only can be given. Uh, if all these things uh, they won't help but uh, adjunctive measures uh, uh, we can uh, think of the adjunctive measures uh, the insoles uh, the median uh, medial uh, tibio femoral joint arthritis is there the lateral insole will be uh, wedging of the insole will be there then uh, so likewise the it is um, lateral you know the medial the insole so that is insoles uh, it's a specialized uh, uh, footwear uh, the so apa and uh, the footwear this is this comes under orthotics uh, so stable supportive shoes uh, sometimes uh, the flat uh, flexible shoes so whichever is uh, suitable uh, we give a biomechanical footwear uh, in this case so uh, knee apart from knee braces uh, uh, this uh, assistive uh, walking device uh, we can advise in soles uh, depending on the uh, type of uh, arthritis osteoarthritis the nutritional supplements as uh, dr uh, pranith palamari has uh, alluded to uh, see the vitamin d with the deficiency the, the the calcium supplements also sometimes we advise then uh, the especially in the among the nutrients and nutritional supplements these are of for some use because the curcuminoids the curcumin the turmeric so hello if it is combined with a black pepper so definitely it helps it reduces the pain this is proved beyond doubt then uh, the boswellia serrata extract so this also uh, herbal uh, therapy uh, this is proved beyond doubt it reduces the pain uh, and also stiffness uh, of the joint 
and increases improves the knee function then uh, everybody prescribes the glucosamine and the chondroitin uh, almost uh, they are uh, equivalent to placebo uh, but uh, glucosamine and the chondroitin also can be used then avocado soybean unsaponable unsapono fibles asu uh, they can be used avocado soy soybean then fish oil also sometimes uh, uh, will be effective because uh, they contain uh, uh, pentanoic acids and the docosop hexanoic acids so uh, they can be given uh, the urgent measures uh, that are, they are equivalent to placebo or sometimes they are little effective but uh, these are all urgent measures uh, apart from the standard uh, pharmacological and the non pharmacological treatment then uh, l carnitine then passion fruit uh, peel extract the collagen hydrolysate then undenatured type 2 collagen because market in the market the joint is 3 d will be available and co joint will be available they contain 3 uh, uh, or 4 uh, what i have mentioned uh, the, the methyl sulfonyl methane then uh, phytoflavonoids these are all uh, uh, come under uh, uh, adjunctive therapies the opioids suppose where the uh, if it uh, nsaids are contraindicated the opioids little less potent opioids like a tramadol sometimes we are advocate uh, then uh, visco supplementation these are all uh, in the regular practice but whether they are helpful or not uh, still uh, the there is no uh, uh, so suggestive uh, there is no data uh, so suggesting the data so intra articular hyaluronic acid also uh, but it is very costly uh, and sometimes uh, after giving injection uh, there will be pain flare ups will be there and uh, sometimes uh, rarely we may get uh, in the joint infection so uh, earlier uh, intra articular hyaluronic acid as a visco supplementation uh, the orthopedic surgeon they used to give but uh, nowadays uh, they are not encouraging then uh, recently i have heard many of my patients many uh, my my relatives also they, they are going to hyderabad to get uh, the platelet platelet rich plasma injections trp so one doctor uh, i don't know where exactly uh, he comes from uh, united states every week uh, once in a week or once in two weeks uh, he gives uh, this injection platelet rich plasma so it is uh, derived from the autologous uh, blood with the platelets being uh, the main constituents uh this platelet rich plasma is given uh into the joint so so this uh, it will contain this platelet rich plasma contains growth factors including the uh, tissue growth factors and the platelet derived growth factors which will mediate the proliferation of mesenchymal stem cells and uh, increases the matrix synthesis and collagen formation and uh, this platelet rich plasma reduces inflammation in osteoarthritis joint by enhancing the expression of nf kappa uh, beta inhibitors and thus reduce nf kappa beta signaling and dampen it down on downstream the inflammation cytokine activation so the platelet rich plasma uh, but a few people may get uh, a little relief a uh, little uh, relief but uh, almost uh, this is also um, many are not advocating uh, this platelet rich plasma uh, even in our uh, whatsapp group also the stem one uh, that is uh, gene therapy uh, stem cell therapy also uh, comes under uh, this uh, adjunctive therapy so this a uh, tens that is the transcutaneous uh, electrical nerve stimulation also can be tried uh, then acupuncture also can be tried the 
Dr. Pranit has alluded to the local heat or sometimes the icing also will help. Uh, so this is regarding the adjunctive therapies. So non-pharmacological therapies uh, like exercise, the especially the quadriceps exercise, then uh, uh, the uh, weight reduction, weight reduction. Uh, if your patient is obese, the knee braces or the insoles, then assistive walking devices. They are not. Uh, uh, they don't relieve the pain. Then we should go for the topical NSAIDs, diclofenac or the capsaicin. Then oral NSAIDs, selective or non-selective. Then uh, if you doesn't get relief, then we go for duloxetine, we add biloxetine. Even if the patient doesn't get relief, then we go for intra-articular corticosteroids, penacard, even selected patients. The, then uh, the adjunctive measures, what I alluded to, uh, they are uh, available in the market like joint ACE or uh, co-joint containing this collagen 2, then um, uh, Bisphilia, uh, serrata extract, then curcuminides. So many are there uh, combination. Then, if it doesn't get if all these things, if the patient is refractory, then we will subject him for surgery, arthroplasty. That is a knee joint replacement. We suggest. Thank you, one and all, for patient listening. Sir, I have a few questions for you. Uh, one the very first that I'll get started with is uh, you mentioned patellofemoral and tibiofemoral osteoarthritis. Is it something that we diagnose on X-ray or uh, uh, X-ray? It can be uh, only X-ray diagnosis only. This is osteoarthritis mainly. It is a clinical where uh, pain in the knee and uh, uh, knee, then the crepitus will be there. The patient. Uh, uh, more around uh, more than 50 years of age. So we diagnose clinically. Then grading will be done by X-ray. So only simple uh, conventional X-ray, uh, digital X-ray. Then we can diagnose uh, uh, grading, the grade one, grade two, depending on the osteopytes, narrowing of the, uh, the joint space, the medial uh, sclerosis, then uh, bone deformity. Depending on that, uh, we grade it. Uh, uh, then the tibiofemoral joint and the patellofemoral joint can be diagnosed, but uh, we have to take uh, different views. We have to take the so, flexed joint uh, standing. Uh, we should take the X-ray for the osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, patient has to stand up, not uh, lying down, but uh, you should stand. And it should flex his uh, knee uh, so that uh, we can uh, differentiate uh, the narrowing of the, uh, the, the joint space, uh, the osteophytes, and all will be visualized. But for that uh, patellofemoral joint, whether it is involved or not, uh, that type of uh, osteoarthritis or not, we should take uh, the sky view uh, so that uh, the patella and the, the uh, Femoral, the femoral end uh, will be very much uh, depicted in that uh, sky view of uh, X-ray. So that uh, the, we will definitely see that uh, sclerosis, osteophytes, and uh, narrowing of the, the patella and uh, this uh, distance. So that different views we should uh, ask for. When we suspect uh, patellofemoral, there if the patient has got only anterior pain, then we go for this sky view. The patient complains of the pain more on the uh, diffuse on the medial side and anteromedial, then we suspect it is a tibiofemoral. If it is anterior, it is a patellofemoral. So for the patellofemoral, we should go for uh, sky view. Uh, we, should, we can uh, ask a sky view of uh, knee. Uh, they will take, uh, the radiographer will take that uh, view where the, both the patella and the femur will be very much uh, visualized. 
Sir, Thank the you. other question is, you mentioned about a lot of these uh, herbal supplements that can be used or which are currently in use. Which of these that you have found helpful in reducing pain on those patients? These uh, curcuminoids, especially the turmeric and the black pepper uh, combined. And uh, so second is the Boswellia serrata extract. Only these two. The black pepper, uh, curcumin, uh, then uh, Boswellia serrata. Uh, I am not uh, talking about other, uh, those so many are there. Uh, the Google, uh, so many plants are there. But I, because the literature also suggests, uh, if at all adjunctive therapy, we should uh, advocate. The only, these curcuminoids have got a role and a Boswellia serrata extract. They are available in the market. It is uh, available in uh, joint is in co-joint formula. And you think that these, these uh, giving these uh, uh, medicines, uh, they would increase their functional capacity and whatnot? No, uh, definitely. Little. Uh, when uh, these NSAIDs and, uh, are contraindicated or NSAIDs uh, uh, along with the duloxetine, if they don't get relief, then we can add uh, this curcuminoids and the Boswellia serrata. Uh, they are safe. Because this is uh, proved beyond doubt. Uh, this, uh, these two, if uh, orthopedic surgeon is there, uh, he will uh, enlighten us. Uh, because uh, they ultimately, in clinical practice, we, the patient is a refractory only we suggest him to go to orthopedic surgeon uh, in the grade four uh, advanced osteoarthritis. Uh, otherwise, most of the patients, they see their family physician. And sir, uh, the last thing is, if you have to advise them knee brace or uh, orthotic, uh, like how do you guide them? Is it something that is uh, custom made or they can just buy it off the shelf? Earlier, uh, this uh, uh, orthotic uh, specialists were there uh, in near Lakadika pool in Hyderabad. Uh, he used to prepare the uh, uh, insole, uh, different insole shoes. So uh, the, the lateral aspect of the sole will be uh, little, the height will be more uh, in case of a medial uh, tibiofemoral uh, osteoarthritis to unload or offload the um, process. So you know, now the orthotic appliances are there in the two, three. Uh, uh, I don't have, uh, especially in uh, Nampali Station Road, uh, we can uh, metro shoes, uh, then uh, other uh, orthotic uh, um, places are there where we'll get uh, the rocker bottom shoes, then uh, insole shoes, then uh, knee braces will be available in uh, any other surgical shop. Uh, they, they are freely available. It will be the physiotherapist, uh, they will advise. Uh, the knee braces are there. The knee taping and the knee bracing, they will be available uh, in the surgical shops. But uh, regarding the orthotic uh, appliances, uh, uh, Mm, certain uh, uh, addresses are uh, there because uh, in diabetes, uh, we advise uh, the uh, MCR rubber shoes. So we uh, ask them to go to this metro or uh, uh, the, especially nowadays, uh, they are available even in the surgical shops also. And sir, the last question for you, uh... Your experience with duloxetine, this is something that doesn't trigger our mind when we are dealing with osteoarthritis. Uh, we have used duloxetine in cases of depression and others uh, or fibromyalgia, but, but uh, never triggers to use it in osteoarthritis. What is your uh, experience of that? This is duloxetine also, I recently started because uh, when the patient uh, 
has got a contraindication for uh, usage of uh, NSAIDs. If he has got a gastrointestinal toxicity, cardiovascular disease, or CKD, or uh, if the patient is under dual antiplatelets or low dose aspirin, then uh, the other drugs like warfarin, the contra, the drug interactions will be there with the NSAIDs. In that situation, the duloxetine it definitely reduces the pain. We, so it is uh, serotonin and uh, the norepinephrine uh, reuptake inhibitors. So um, the pain pathways. So uh, it is effective now. Uh, I'm using along with the NSAIDs and uh, as well as uh, where the NSAIDs are contraindicated, I use only uh, duloxetine. Uh, only thing is uh, NSAIDs are literally uh, they are uh, magic uh, bullets in case of uh, osteoarthritis. But uh, because of uh, toxicity, uh, we are really more worried. Uh, otherwise, duloxetine is not that effective. But definitely, duloxetine gives little relief uh, uh, compared to uh, the acetaminophen. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I'll move on. I don't think that the ortho surgeon will be joining us today. So we'll just continue our discussion. Uh, Salma asks about chondromalacia. I have I have very less idea about chondromalacia. Sankar, sir, do you know what, what we mean by chondromalacia in the setting of osteoarthritis? Uh, this is uh, chondromalacia. Mostly we see in uh, younger patients, so below 40 years of age, uh, if they have got uh, any osteoarthritis features, then uh, we ask them, uh, we go for MRI of the knee then we'll see any tears are there, any cartilaginous uh, uh, damage is there. Most of the times they will give a history of uh, trauma. So the, the, this comes under uh, secondary osteoarthritis. The primary osteoarthritis is what we see in the advanced stage, that is a degenerative one. But uh, secondary osteoarthritis we see most of the times with the trauma, uh, uh, hemarthrosis. Uh, those situations will get. Uh, so, younger patients, we think of uh, that is the radiological diagnosis, uh, especially MRI, magnet. Perfect. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, if anybody has got any questions or comments, they can uh, unmute themselves or put it in the chat box. Uh, at this point, I will ask Samaraju, sir, for his opinion about uh, today's topic and uh, what he can suggest us for medical management of osteoarthritis. Yeah, we, it's a very uh, important area that you brought out, <coughs> Dr. Anup and uh, Pranit, uh, and a uh, lot of issues are already covered, except uh, a few things I'll just mention. Uh, NSAIDs are, uh, in the patient population that we deal with, NSAIDs are absolutely not uh, uh, not to be used. And uh, in the patient population that we deal with, that's number one. Number two, uh, say somebody, uh, I think uh, Pranit said, I'll uh, take the opinion of orthopedic surgeon whether he needs replacement. You know, it is something like, you know, uh, from the experience we had over a period of years, uh, it is something like go to a barber shop and ask whether you need a haircut. That is the experience we had with orthopedic uh, uh, practices and uh, uh, liberal use of uh, knee replacements. And be particularly be aware of it. It is extremely important. And then uh, uh, also believe that most of the patients. Uh, before I go to most of the patients, I'll say something about what Dr. Shankar said. Uh, most of the patients go to their family practitioner or a treating physician first before they go to other surgeons. It's not true today. They directly go to other surgeons, have any replacement done, and then come to you. That's quite a common occurrence now. And uh, 
uh, that is the uh, that is where it is being done. And uh, uh, any other question anyone has, I, I, I'll. So number one, uh, say lastly, I just want to say that pain is real, and the pain relief matters. Whichever way you do, relaxatine along with other medications that are acceptable does work. And uh, number one, exercise is fundamental. Most of the patients are, uh, have to be educated that exercise does help. And secondly, uh, loss of weight, overweight, weight reduction and exercise are fundamental in dealing with our patients. Thank you. Sir, I have a few questions for you. The most, most relevant question is COX-2 inhibitors in our patient subset. Yes, no, bad idea. What is your thoughts on it? I will say I won't use it, but I don't know whether they are safe, but I, uh, I, uh, I don't use them. Sir, how about oral steroids in the in tre tre treating uh, osteoarthritis? Now, since you are saying no to NSAIDs, can we use steroids in our patient subset? Oral, no. Oral steroids have no role. And uh, in even intraarticular has a temporary benefit, but not long term. Sir, have you ever sent your patient for platelet rich plasma injection? No, not yet. Okay, that is all the questions that I had for you, sir. Uh, if there is any other questions or comments from anybody, uh, we'll take it. And if not, I'll ask Praneet to give his closing comments for today's discussion. Yeah, no, uh, fairly common problem that we do encounter in day-to-day -day practice. And uh, most of the time, uh, being a primary physician bar primary uh, doctor or the first doctor that they encounter, they seek your opinion first to, regarding what to do. And um, so there is a responsibility both in guiding them and equally uh, suggesting what is the appropriate time in terms of uh, clearing them for knee replacement if they need and equally trying to avoid and equally suggesting them uh, therapies where they are they are relieved from pain. A uh, few things uh, which were brought up, uh, non-pharmacological me measures was definitely interesting in terms of uh, uh, usage of uh, various pain therapies, physiotherapy, uh, TENS, and uh, for hot fermentation, and equally these braces, and probably usage of uh, duloxetine. These are all, uh, I think, uh, are there in uh, our uh, reach. Uh, there are these days uh, specialist uh, pain clinic, uh, uh, pain management clinics as well. I believe uh, we should equally reach to them who can help these uh, patients uh, get relieved from the pain in those patients who are not fit or who do not want to undergo knee replacement or who are too early to undergo re knee replacement. I, I believe these, these things also should be uh, used. And uh, most importantly, uh, trying to take the goal of uh, relieving pain even if some things work as a placebo and help relieve pain, we should not be shying away from prescribing those. But uh, the ultimate goal is to relieve pain and improve their functional capacity. Uh, focusing on uh, weight loss, physiotherapy uh, should never be underestimated and the patient should be encouraged to be active and uh, by which they probably can uh, help uh, relieve their pain and uh, manage their osteoarthritis better. Thank you, Praneet, and uh, thank you, everyone. I think Dr. Kasha just joined us. Uh, Hi, Dr. Anup. Welcome... Yeah, hey, hey. Welcome mm -hmm. to the session. We are just about to close the session. We are uh, we are reaching towards the end of it. Uh, we will we will uh, we will have you in in uh, next session. We will do one more uh, session on ortho osteoarthritis. We'll have you in that session to share your thought process. Sure, uh, sure. I thank. I thank each one of you for joining today. We will meet again next Wednesday with a new topic. Thank you all. Good night. See you again.